Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Interconnect 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. You are watching theCUBE, our flagship programs from SiliconANGLE Media, Wikibon theCUBE, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante, founder of Wikibon. Um, our next guest is Douglas Soltis, senior editor of Mobile Syrup, it's been around the block, knows mobile up and down. I mean, you know, back in the old Blackberry days, everyone had the Crackberry, now it's like the iPhone comes out, the whole world changes, now it's Internet of Things. Guy from Bosch earlier said there's zillions of connected devices, they don't know where they're going to start. Mobile has highlighted the tsunami of user meets developer meets app value. We see this, this kind of intersection of, I can stand something up in the cloud, touch a user and get massive distribution, great utility. Mobile has highlighted to everybody, analytics, utility. It's been a, some amazing well, eight years since the iPhone and certainly before that, but what's well, your take on all this? It was, it's the opportunity and the concern, right? Because every device is a, is a touch point for access to that information and control of it. So you have these uh, companies figuring out a way to manage that on the back end for the user, and then you have the security concerns of making sure that information is, uh, is, is secure or uh, contained within the certain requirements of the company, right? What's your take on IBM's place right now? Obviously, IBM's got a good direction. They've done their homework. They have, it all hangs together, the strategy, cloud mobile, social, enterprise well, now is hot. They got a deal with Apple. They have a deal with Twitter. They're getting modern. Redis is here, Docker's here. You're hearing all this cool stuff. Where are they? What's your take on well, that? Well, I think this, this event so far has been an example of kind of that convergence where they're understanding, you know, it's, it's not just about mobile. It's not just about the cloud. It's not just about the developer stuff. It's about how all those things are coming together. Um, I think the partnership with uh, Apple is really smart. They already have, I think, 10, out, 10 apps out already, looking for 100. Uh, Twitter deal is, is great. I think with some of the partners that they uh, had in the keynotes today, it's uh, demonstrating uh, that these established enterprises are starting to think and speak and act like entrepreneurs. When you have uh, a leader of Citibank saying that uh, they understand that their customers uh, require banking services but don't require a, a bank, that should be kind of a, that's a, that's a dog whistle to everyone yeah. that they're really paying attention to how to build that out. Douglas, talk about the difference between user experience, user interface versus user expectation. Okay, so uh, I, I think one of the biggest issues with mobile is that it's as such a powerful tool um, in trying to solve these problems, there's a lot of work around uh, passing off the difficulty to the user rather than solving problems for them. Mobile is something where you need exactly uh, what you want in the moment, uh, presented in the perfect way and nothing else. It's, it's, it's that powerful that the context has to be working. Um, so it, developers really struggle um, managing that expectation of delivering information in real time, delivering it simply, uh, without you know, presenting it in a way where it's too unwieldy for the user, uh, too complicated. Um, and I actually wrote a, an article for IBM leading up the conference about collective user grown. Whereas you know, the, the first time or second time they use an app that doesn't present them what they need in the moment, and they turn that app off to go back to their, uh, their desk to use their laptop, they're never opening that app again. And that's because that app didn't try to solve a problem for them on their device. Um, and I think that's the real issue that developers have to work on, is like how do they simplify but keep yeah. it powerful? So I, I live in Palo Alto, Dave is um, in the East Coast. We always compare and contrast, you know. I then Steve Jobs obviously was in Palo Alto and Apple. And we always joke about, oh yeah, you know, being more hype up on the, uh, on, the, uh, on, the on the mobile. But Steve, jo to quote Steve Jobs, he said, in this reality distortion field, our users don't know yet what they want, and we have to build them that. And that, that's awesome, right? But this brings up the point. They don't know what they want, but they know what they don't like. They know yes. what they hate. Expand on that. What's the what does that mean for opportunities? Because enterprises are now faced with real surge of build more apps faster now, yeah. mobile first being key. They have to see this new thing. How do they? How do you advise them? What's your advice for folks? And what are you seeing out in the field for like how people deal with that one question? Because if you misfire yeah. <laughs> with mobile, you're dead. I mean, look at the founder of Twitter started a bunch of mobile apps and they all failed. Yeah, well, so I, it's like it's it's hit or miss. I, I think it's following the example of what we've seen the past few years in the the bring your own services 
space with Apple's uh, applications like uh, Dropbox, Slack, Yammer, things like that, that were built for small business or enterprise, but designed for the standard consumer experience. It was, it was meant to be simple and easy to use like any consumer app, it just happened to have enterprise functionality. I think mobile makes that not simply a nice to have, but a fundamental requirement. Um, because in, in, in that way, they're not going to spend time uh, working with an app that's difficult to use when they're on the go in the field. Like, they just need it to work. And what's your feeling for um, developers in the enterprise? Mobile developers tend to be a little snobby. They like Amazon. They might not be attracted to, say, a blue mix. I mean, there's a Gen 1 kind of like born in the cloud. That's pretty much Amazon. I think all developers like to choose their tools and fight <laughs> for them. Yeah. I, I think with what we're seeing here with some of the announcements that uh, IBM is making where um, all these uh, services are being kind of unbundled and packaged up and um, distributed through the cloud so developers can kind of pick and choose what they want to work with to make it happen is important. But at the end of the day, uh, the developers are there to solve a problem for the user, not present what is uh, easiest for them to manage. So if, if they're focused on the user experience, they will be successful. Even if it means pain for them, they just can't push it off to the user. Can we go back to the IBM Apple deal? Yeah. Um, I, w I want to get your take on that. When it, when it first came out, if it sounds good, IBM yeah. Apple, that's great. A lot of the skeptics said, oh, Apple's got all the hot products. Mm -hmm. You know, IBM has got the distribution channel. It's just sort of a distribution deal for IBM. But my understanding is it's it's actually more than that. They're actually developing unique apps. Oh, um, and and that's what's exciting about it. You mentioned ten. I wonder if you could. What's your take on the arrangement, the the, the partnership? Um, what do you think? What what excites you? What are the challenges that you see that they're going to have to get through? So I think it's a blending of cultures, beyond just the kind of like the distribution arrangement, where you see Apple does something really well, which is build great hardware, and that hardware is being dragged more and more into the enterprise which they don't necessarily understand. And then you have a company like IBM uh, who has these enterprise services, but uh, needs to stay in that 21st century modality of making sure that they're simple, connected. All, all the things that Apple really uh, excels at from an experience standpoint. So I think them working together to build these services satisfies the requirements that they both kind of innately know and care about without having to um, figure out the things that aren't core competencies for them. I think it's, I think it's more than just distribution. I think it's um, both companies growing. Well, and so IBM's putting a lot of the, 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 the code in, the, the juice yeah. for the application itself. But to your point earlier, it's, it's, you mentioned you know, guys like, 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 you mentioned Dropbox, Slack, Yammer, consumer guys coming into the enterprise. Does IBM have the consumer chops to be able to do that? Or have we evolved to the point where the skill sets are available? Uh, I think I think so. I think like there are 21,000 people here. A lot of them are developers. Uh, a lot of the applications that are being worked on here, like the partner that's uh, just during the mobile keynote uh, a few minutes ago, with I think it was ICICI Bank in mm -hmm. India, deciding um, instead of ignoring a demographic that they had previously left underserved, created a product specifically for youth around mobile, like. That's, that's new, that's significant. And working with IBM to do that, I think that's a big change. I feel like, I wonder if you could comment on this too, Douglas, I feel like the market's really bifurcated. You get like a lot of really good, a handful of really good mobile apps. And you know it when you see it. Yes. Like, wow, totally. this is a great mobile app. And then you get others that don't even try. Yeah. Um, and then there's the tweeners. And most of them right now are either tweeners or they don't even try. So it seems like there's a lot of upside. What's your prediction in terms of how fast that goes? How, how fast the stratification between those? No, how, how fast that, that gap closes, sorry. Oh, uh, I, don't, I don't think it's a matter of closing. I think it's constantly evolving as the needs uh, of mobile change, right? Because you know we were talking about BlackBerry. I spent three years at BlackBerry. Uh, the most important thing at that point was the ability to send a message to one another. Yeah. That was an amazing thing, Email real machine. time. That yeah. was a killer app. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then, then it was uh, multimedia, video, photos. And now we're talking about like huge, huge amounts of information not only being presented to you on your device, but you uh, being able to inform it and have access to it. Like uh, an entire fleet of truck drivers being able to send real-time feedback uh, on decisions being deployed to them. Like, 
what's what's going to happen in the next few years and what's what's necessary I, I have no idea but i know that that battle for uh making the answers very simple and powerful will continue to play out because the apps that you don't like using the apps that don't make sense are the ones where you can't trust them to do that one thing really really well yeah and is that your advice is focus on doing that one thing really really well yeah i i, I think i think if you you probably how many apps do you have on your phone right now Dozens. How many do you use? Maybe a dozen. Yeah, and you, I'm sure that with each application you go to that app for a specific purpose. I, I think that, so I, I have these apps yeah, because, absolutely. I, I, yes, absolutely, no question. I have them because I was forced to use them. How many apps I you have you don't choice? use? I mean, I, like I have a ton of stuff. But I've used seasonal. them all once because I was forced to use it, but the utility of going yeah. back doesn't exist. But maybe yeah. there's a dozen. Well, the March Madness one's only good during March, right? Then you don't and use the that one. You got the NFL okay. one, you got ESPN, you got Twitter, I use that all the time. So this comes down to utility, right? Yeah. So, so they're siloed data apps, right? So this is a data question. We've been talking about this all the time. Where are the, where's the data? And where's the data in the apps? So is there going to be data traversal and whatnot? So, you see apps come and go. Secret went up, failed. Uh, I mean, these apps are hard. yo, yeah, well, yeah, yikes out there. But apps can be successful and die very quickly. Well, I, I think that? I think apps can have a lot of hype around them, and there's a hype cycle around that, uh, and that hype cycle can die. But when you're talking about, say, uh, March Madness or different sports that are seasonal, there's a great app out of Canada called The Score, which allows you to kind of customize and personalize your sports experience by season. So you're always using that app. Maybe for a different sport. At a I can different watch time. the Masters. I can watch totally. football. That's yeah. right. That World Cup is a comes great in, and, and the app changes for you based upon um, what that that season or your interests. Doug, summarize um, the segment about what's up for the customers. Talk to the customers out there. Tell them what's on. What should they be doing? Why IBM? Why here? Why now? Why even enterprise mobile? What's the, the key walk away? Uh, I think they should be paying attention yeah. to the fact that the leaders in this space are. Uh, in enterprise are speaking as if they were young, up and coming entrepreneurs and recognizing that um, they need to make new choices to kind of, to satisfy their customers going forward because the, the institutional um, ownership that they might have isn't necessarily guaranteed and they're using mobile specifically to do that, powered by the cloud. Um, and then that requires you to really think about security and how that's deployed. So. Douglas Soltis here on theCUBE with mobile server, influencer, writer, covering mobile. Again, again, been looking at the landscape, certainly changed. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. We are here live in Las Vegas at theCUBE, inside the Go Social Lounge, bringing you all the action uh, to you. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.